We're continuing our discussion of the modes of documentary now with what is known as the participatory or the interactive mode. Now this mode uh, really develops uh, shortly after the observational mode is dominant and the key difference with the, the participatory or the interactive mode is that the filmmaker actively engages the subject. You see the filmmaker engaging, you see that how the filmmaker is really making things happen um, and not pretending to not have any kind of impact. So the most common way, of course, that filmmakers do that is by simply interviewing subjects. Uh, that is a participatory aspect of documentary. To interview someone, you're asking them questions, you're talking to them, right? You're staging that interview in a place rather than just shooting someone talking, say. So the participatory mode uh, is also different from the expository mode because in the participatory mode, we see the filmmaker asking questions. We hear the questions. We know where these things are coming from rather than it just being presented to us as this is the way things are. So as a strategy for representing reality, the idea is that truth emerges not just from uh, objectively uh, appearing in front of us to observe, but through probing, through investigating, through asking questions. And we, as audience members, should know what those questions are. We should see what it is that's prompting this. So in the participatory interactive mode, you will see the filmmaker on screen. You will hear their voice to some extent, and some more, more so than others. So that you, also as an audience member, you become uh, an active participant in the sense of putting these things together and understanding what you're being told is not just for you to consume and absorb, but this is where it's coming from. These are the kinds of questions that are being asked. This is what this is important, and this is why these subjects are saying these things. So participatory or interactive mode, really very different from observational because rather than pretending not to be there, the emphasis is on the interaction of the filmmaker with the subject and how the documentary comes from that interaction. One of the most famous documentary filmmakers of the last 20 years is Michael Moore. And I'm going to show you um, an, a, a, an excerpt from his film Bowling for Columbine, which is about uh, gun violence and trying to understand the sources of gun violence. Uh, and in this clip you're going to see, it is a very contrived scene where uh, he stages a confrontation between uh, kids that were shot in the Columbine massacre uh, back at the end of the 90s in Colorado with uh, Kmart, which sells the bullets that were used um, to, to, to shoot these kids. Uh, so I think it's informative because you'll see that on the one hand, observational is, observation is still important. We're observing and we're learning things about these subjects, whether it's the kids or whether it's the, the corporation that can't really re respond to them. Um, but we're also seeing where that comes from. We're seeing that it's staged. So to criticize this as being staged really doesn't make any sense. That's the point. We know that this wouldn't happen in the natural world. This, this is not just an all-occurring thing that these kids would show up like this. We see the process, though. That's the subject of the film. Therefore, it's a legitimate documentary strategy. Um, okay, so this is just... An interesting film, um, regardless oh, what your feelings are that. about gun violence and the, and the causes and, and, and results or, yeah. of yeah, gun violence and what ought to be do, done about it, I really uh, recommend checking out this film. Semi-automatic, but so, seem like fully automatic to me, from what I remember. This is Richard Castaldo, and this is Mark. Well, I was shot with a Tech Nine. Nine millimeter. Yeah, yeah, it was a. Uh, I guess it was supposed to be semi-automatic, but it kind of seemed like fully automatic to me, from what I remember. This is Richard Castaldo, and this is Mark Taylor. Both of these boys were shot the day of the Columbine Massacre. Richard is paralyzed for life and in a wheelchair, and Mark is barely standing. So obviously now we've been introduced to the two people that are going to talk to us and we get to observe what they're like and what their lives are like, but we also hear the voice of the filmmaker who's telling us who they are. Operations. The kids at Columbine had to pay a penalty. We paid a penalty that day for this nation, the way we look at it. Mark and Richard were disabled and suffering from the 17-cent Kmart bullets still embedded in their bodies. 
as they showed me the various entry points for the bullets. I thought of one way we could reduce the number of guns and bullets laying around. I asked the boys if they'd like to go to Kmart to return the merchandise. All right, so here you're also getting to see, you know, this is a way in which mise-en-scene is important. They've got a hidden camera, um, or at least it seems like it's hidden. It sure does look terrible at this point, right? But they're getting out of the car in daylight, and they haven't arranged to do this with uh, Kmart. They're just showing up and doing it. Uh, but this is, of course, very interactive, participatory. Here we are, the camera's coming in. And we're going to get to observe how Kmart and the, the, the public relations people at Kmart deal with this scene where these, these kids that have bullets in them from being shot at Columbine are trying to return the merchandise. So of course, uh, that's a kind of a seemingly ridiculous thing to see, to say that you're going to do. Uh, but the point is that in this documentary, we actually are observing how they interact. So this is the PR lady. This is uh, Richard Castaldo, Richard, nice and uh, this is Mark Taylor, Mark. and uh, they're students uh, from Columbine High School. They were shot, they were shot at Columbine in, in the massacre with bullets from Kmart. They came a long way. Yes, so they. From Colorado. Yeah, I just was thinking it since you stopped selling the handguns and all, and they kind of make sense to stop selling the bullets too. Our request is that you get rid of the 9mm bullets and that you don't sell them in the short completely. We do carry, you probably are aware of Kmart, hopefully you're shoppers of our stores, that we do only carry, you know, sporting firearms and the... So when you look at this, and you can see as an example of the participatory mode, it's still using these other important elements. There's interviews. There's observation. We're seeing what the, this place is like and what the response to these kids are like. We're seeing what their lives are like. There's those different elements are here too. Um, but the thing that makes it participatory is that we see the questions we see behind the scenes in terms of what's being asked and so on. Um, but at the same time, the subject is still about exploring a particular issue and learning about that, that particular issue through those those interactions.